welcome to the EEPROM 9. This is a tele equipment D61A, and we are going to have a look inside it and check out this knob. That has just such beautiful tactile feedback. <laughs> this is about 8 kilos. I transported it back on my bicycle. I actually literally strapped it down with several elastic straps to hold it in place and managed to get it to hold relatively rigidly. But yeah, not the most practical way of transporting um, an oscilloscope. So, we will undo the three screws at the back. This is how we rotate the trace. You physically rotate the CRT. I love how old school that is. It has a Z mode input, which is basically for automatically dimming the CRT. I've actually been looking for a scope with that. So this fulfills a requirement I have for a project. This thing's actually a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's like the size of my um, dual channel Haymeg in the cupboard. But hey, I'll have proper storage and whatnot soon. So, yeah. Right, screwdriver, because you don't want to see the case. Um, this would be one of the cases where it would be really useful if I had editing software on my phone. On PC, well, not this PC you're looking at because I had to rebuild the OS from scratch, and that's one of the things I haven't got round to installing yet. Luckily, there's only three screws to get this thing apart. Move my Metrix multimeter out the way. The voltage selector is basically a valve socket. That you just spin round to where that arrow is pointing and that's on 234 which is the highest it goes. Apparently this can run on a 400 hertz power supply so that's basically avionics right there. So you could use this on aircraft, although it only has TV and AC triggering, which is a bit of a limitation. The trigger on it is relatively limited, but that's not what I was looking for. This scope was kind of a happy accident. Well, buying it wasn't an accident, but it kind of fitting all the requirements for a particular project of mine to basically build an Atari Asteroids cabinet type thing and using an oscilloscope as a cheap vector display because yeah you just try and get a vector display any other way. I've replaced the rubber grommet on the back because the old one was all degraded and disgusting. I'm going to have to put the phone down while I do this. This is where does my lamp reach round enough? No, it does not. So we have our power and focus pot here, power and uh, intensity pot, and then our focus pot here. This is where the highest voltages tend to live. Then on the back here, I like this. This is a nice thing. A high voltage neon that indicates whether you're at risk of getting a shock. More stuff should have little safety features like this that tell you when you go inside. Oh, this is dangerous. And this is the back of the CRT with its connector. If we unscrew this... Oh god, I love taking things apart. It's so much fun fun. Yeah, I ordered this, it came from work, got it, arrives at work, so all that good jazz. This is why you want magnetic screwdrivers. Non-magnetic screwdrivers are rubbish. Take that off, and it's basically a power plane board. Look at that cap and that resistor. I have a suspicion this might need some calibration here and there. There's our safety neon. 
Yeah, it is actually a proper valve socket too for the old school valves, fuse. You know, it's got all your basic stuff. It even labelled power. I like that. We need more of this. Bridge rectifier diodes. It's relatively simple on the back. Oh, we almost lost the washer. I don't want to lose that. This is so professional right now. You can see why I totally do this professionally on the YouTube thing. And then we get to the more interesting insides. Now, annoyingly, the CRT cover is riveted on, which would mean to remove it will be an absolute pain in the ass. And will require drilling out the rivets and putting in proper screws, which is what I'll do at a later date. So we won't be actually showing you the CRT. Right, I've got to do this one-handed. Oh, there we go. And we're in Lake Flynn. Oh, God, you can see the backlight flicker on the... Uh, LCD display. Here's our three main filter cap electrolytes. Power transformer. Around... Where is it? Uh, there, that little solder point you can see there is our big high voltage cath anode which would kill you on site well not kill you it's just a massive capacitor that give you a nasty jolt you have a lot of horror stories about what they can do to you and the back of the board and check out the switch max aren't they something of beauty I miss range switches like that why they don't design them like that anymore I do not know because that's just the thing of beauty and a joy to behold forever. Nice thing about this being 1970s is, from my experience, 70s caps are really reliable. I do suspect I'm going to need a, to do a little bit of work inside this, but I'm not going to need to do a lot. You've got your standard, I believe these are axial caps, the ones with pins on both sides and they just heat shrunk round. Helps if I point the camera of the phone in the right place. Ah, the camera's there. Hello. Standard caps, axial, whatever the hell they call them. PYE, 100 UF, 100 volts DC. And then all the transistors are all socketed. Yes, this scope is entirely transistor. I can show you up into where the CRT lives. You can kind of see it up there. And this high voltage label basically inputs where the anode comes out. Oh, maybe that's not the anode. Okay, fair enough. I'm not... Oh, there's the anode. No, that just goes into this cap. I can't actually see where the anode comes up. Yeah, this is where the anode voltage is generated. Another transistor from years ago, this little board. This is the nice thing, entirely transistor, all socketed. This thing will will be super easy to work on. I've heard people talking them to be complete pigs to work on, but you can easily access the solder side and you can easily access the component side. Drill out a few rivets and you can access the CRT. So I would disagree that it's a pig to work on. But are there aspects of it that are difficult? Yeah, rivets don't help. I hate rivets. I don't know why things are put together with rivets. 
But yeah, that's inside it. Well, I can't really tell you a lot about it at the moment because I haven't really analysed the circuit in detail. Because I've literally only brought it home this weekend. So. But I love this 70s construction. Look at these inductors, aren't these interesting? You don't see inductors like that. Where they all look almost like diodes of wire, wire around them. But yeah. And then these old school like. Almost look like little sweets these transistors. Although I wouldn't try eating them. I'm not sure if they're geranium or silicon. Could be either knowing the 70s. But yeah, all the caps seem fine on the ones I have managed to test. Some of them are a bit awkward to get to at this end because of the power transformer. But they seem to be A-OK -okay so far. So I've got some power transistors there. Yeah, that's going up towards the CRT. That makes sense. A bit more beefy than your standard little standard package down here. So this is obviously from an era transistors were expensive. But those switches and this. Let's see if we can get you some. Oh, you can't see it moving around. That's a shame. But yeah, this is where I'm going to leave you. Thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed some mid 70s scope porn. This thing will be a very useful scope to my collection. Yes, I have a collection of oscilloscopes now. <laughs> I have too many collections of things. <laughs> Thanks for watching.